We've just been across the street at the closest thing this WWDC keynote has to a demo room. And instead of a whole bunch of different types of products all lined up, they had one key product they were showing off, really the only new hardware package at the show this year. And that is something we've been waiting for for a long time, the new Mac Pro desktop coupled with a uh, compatible super high-res 6K monitor uh, with its own cool eccentricities and a crazy stand that you have to buy separately for $1,000 on top of the $5,000 monitor. But let's be honest, we're really all here to look at, talk about, play with the new Mac Pro desktop. It's a big change from what we've been used to. Since 2013, uh, the Mac Pro desktop has had an ultra-modern, very minimalist design, a black, almost a Darth Vader-y helmet meets a trash can sort of shape that I always thought was very cool, uh, but at the same time, it was perhaps not as practical as a lot of people wanted, especially creative pros, and they're the ones who are really buying these super expensive systems. The problem with the uh, trash can Mac Pro, as we affectionately called it, was that it didn't have any room for expansion internally. It had a, some components it came with, and that was basically it. You could change the RAM and you know do something different with the hard drive, but there wasn't a lot of room. Anything you wanted to hook up, you had to do externally uh, through outboard gear you'd connect, and your minimalist uh, trash can would quickly get junked up with wires going everywhere. And it's a very expensive process to just add extra parts on the outside of the system when you can't open it up and put new stuff inside. So what have they done now for 2019? I call this the Back to the Future Mac Pro because they've taken a almost shockingly traditionalist approach to designing a desktop. It really looks and feels a lot more like the way, way old power Mac Pro than it does like the one they've been selling for the last six years. And it's traditionalist and it's conservative in design, but in a good way because it gives you what these people who would buy this system actually want. A lot of space, a lot of thermal headroom, so you can run a lot of really hot components inside uh, without having to worry about the system overheating, and plenty of internal expansion. I think there were six PCI Express slots inside, and of course you can get to them simply by lifting the outer shell of the case up, it lifts right off, uh, and then you can access all of the, uh, all the ports, um, all of the slots, all the places you can put hard drives, uh, and then just slide the top right back on. In a way that reminded me a little bit of how high-end gaming desktops are constructed really for maximum accessibility and with a real emphasis on having enough PCI slots for all the graphics cards you want to put in. The difference here, instead of having a consumer level Intel CPU and NVIDIA RTX graphics, uh, this has got Intel Xeon processors and it's also got uh, AMD super high-end professional graphics. So it's not really something a gamer would get, for example, but it's something you would get if you were building a game or if you were uh, recording and editing and putting together you know, 4K or higher or 8K video about a game or about anything else. So the key is really expandability. It starts at uh, $5,999, but I don't think anyone's gonna want that one. You're gonna wanna build it up and up with all these, uh, a lot of extra RAM and a lot of extra hard drive space and obviously uh, these two, one or two big AMD graphics cards. And that'll get you up to 10, 12, maybe $20,000. This guy is really the limit. Uh, I, was, I was struck by the by the very traditional look and feel of it. Uh, everyone's calling it a cheese grater in the front, which I, which I, I can appreciate. There's a lot of vent holes, basically. Um, I really loved how at the bottom, it's optional, I'm sure they'll charge you extra, but you can put four casters, wheels on the bottom, and you can actually wheel this thing around. It's smaller than an old Mac Pro giant tower desktop used to be, but still pretty hefty compared to the little tiny uh, micro trash can size model was, which I just saw. I was in London just the other week, and I went to Harrods, the super high-end department store, and I said, oh, let me check out the tech section. What do they have there? In the Apple section of Harrods, again, very fancy, very high-end, uh, what were they displaying? That trash can Mac Pro at the full price. I was like, wait a minute, they're probably gonna have to change that out next week. And here we are next week at WWDC, and that is exactly what happened. So I think that with this new Mac Pro, they've given the creative audience, the photographers, animators, artists, developers, pretty much exactly what they've been looking for for the last several years and not getting. A lot of them have defected to other brands. They've gone Windows just because you can build a system any way you want it and change it up and upgrade it whenever you feel like. Uh, and they feel like they haven't had a pro level Mac device uh, to serve their needs over the last several years. Apple tried with the iMac Pro, but it was basically just the same old iMac, but just with some of these pro uh, Xeon level parts inside. So this is, for a lot of money, admittedly, 
uh, the, the, full, the full Monty for these guys. And you can expect if you run a company, for example, that does a lot of high-end photo and video work, animation, uh, game designing, all the people on your team to start submitting requests for you to buy them the new Mac Pro and not the entry level $6,000 model. They're going to want fancy ones with the $5,000 6K monitor and the $1,000 extra monitor stand. Uh, probably the most expensive monitor stand I've ever seen. So I would start saving up now if you want to see all this stuff. Should come out later this fall, just in time for the holiday season. And that is what's happening with the new Apple Mac Pro at WWDC 2019.